Hello, fabulous scholars. Maud and I are very excited to start our new read aloud book. It is called Odd and the Frost Giants by Neil Gaiman. And it's set in Viking times in ancient Norway. So I'm kind of excited to share this. It's got some nice illustrations as well. They're all in black and white, black and white, but they've got lots of details. All right, here we go. Odd and the Frost Giants. Chapter one, Odd. There was once a boy called Odd, and there was nothing strange or unusual about that, not in that time or place. Odd meant the tip of a blade, and it was a lucky name. He was odd, though. At least the other villagers thought so. But if there was one thing he wasn't, that was lucky. His father had been killed during a sea raid two years before, when Odd was ten. It was not unknown for people to get killed in sea raids, but his father wasn't killed by a Scotsman dying in glory in the heat of battle as a Viking should. He had jumped overboard to rescue one of the stocky little ponies that they took with them on their raids as pack animals. They would load the ponies up with gold and valuables and food and weapons, and then the ponies would trudge back to the longship. The ponies were the most valuable and hardworking things on the ship. After Olaf the Tall was killed by a Scotsman, Odd's father had to look after the ponies. Odd's father wasn't very experienced with ponies, being a woodcutter and a wood carver by trade, but he did his best. On the return journey, one of the ponies got loose during a squall, that means a storm, off Orkney and fell overboard. Odd's father jumped into the gray sea with a rope, pulled the pony back to the ship, and with the other Vikings, hauled it back up on deck. He died the next morning of the cold and the wet and the water in his lungs. When they returned to Norway, they told Odd's mother, and Odd's mother told Odd. Odd just shrugged. He didn't cry, he didn't say anything. Nobody knew what Odd felt on the inside. Nobody knew what he thought. And in a village on the banks of fjord where everybody knew everybody's business, that was infuriating, meaning it makes people angry that they don't know what Odd is thinking. There were no full-time Vikings back then. Everybody had another job. Sea raiding was something the men did for fun or to get things they couldn't find in their village. So here's a picture of the Vikings having sea raiding. Odd's father had been a master of the axe. He had a one-room cabin that he had built from logs deep in the little forest behind, behind the fjord, and he would go out to the woods and return a week or so later with his hand cut, cart, hand cart piled high with logs, all ready to weather and to split, for they made everything they could out of wood in those parts. Wooden nails joined wooden boards to build wooden dwellings or wooden boats. In the winter, when the snows were far too deep to travel, Odd's father would sit by the fire and carve, making wood into faces and toys and drinking cups and bowls, while Odd's mother sewed and cooked and always sang. She had a beautiful voice. Odd didn't understand all the words of the songs she sang, but she would translate them after she had sung them and his head would roll with fine lords riding out on their great horses, their noble falcons on their wrists, brave hounds always padding by their sides, off to get into all manner of trouble, fighting giants and rescuing maidens and freeing the oppressed from tyranny. After Odd's father died, his mother sang less and less. Odd kept smiling though, and it drove the villager villagers mad. He even smiled after the accident that crippled his left leg. It was three weeks after the longship had come back without his father's body. Odd had taken his father's tree-cutting axe so huge he could hardly lift it and hauled it out into the woods, certain that he knew all there was to know about cutting trees and determined to put that knowledge into practice. Here's a picture of Odd's mother and father, by the way. He should possibly, he admitted to his mother later, 
have used the smaller axe and a smaller tree to practice on. Still, what he did was remarkable. After the tree had fallen on his foot, he had used the axe to dig away the earth beneath his leg, and he had pulled it out, and he had cut a branch to make himself a crutch to lean on, for the bones in his leg were shattered. And somehow he got himself home, hauling his father's heavy axe with him, for metal was rare in those hills, and axes needed to be bartered, that means traded, or stolen, and he could not have left it to rust. So here's Odd after he broke his leg, managing to find his way home through the woods, dragging his father's axe, because it's worth a lot of money. So two years passed, and Odd's mother married Fat Alfred, who was amiable enough, that means he's friendly enough, but he already had four sons and three daughters from a previous marriage. Alfred's wife had been struck by lightning, and he had no time for an injured stepson. So Odd spent more and more time out in the great woods. So here's some adults. Odd loved the spring when the waterfalls began to course down the valleys and the woodland was covered with flowers. He liked summer when the first berries began to ripen and autumn when there were nuts and small apples. Odd did not care for the winter when the villagers spent as much time as they could in the village's great hall, eating root vegetables and salted meat. Ah, these are, that's what they're doing, they're hanging out in the great hall. Now I understand. In the winter, the men would fight and sing and sleep and wake and fight again, and the women would shake their heads and sew and knit and mend. By March, the worst of the winter would be over, the snow would thaw, the rivers would run, and the world would wake into itself again. This color doesn't sound a lot like weather in Minnesota. Yeah. But not that year that Odd was 12. Winter hung in there like an invalid refusing to die. Day after gray day, the ice stayed hard and the world remained unfriendly and cold. In the village, the people got on one another's nerves. They'd been staring at each other across the great hall for months now. It was time for the men to make the longship seaworthy, time for the women to start clearing the ground for planting. The games became nasty, the jokes became mean, fights were now to hurt. Which is why one morning at the end of March, some hours before the sun was up, when the frost was hard and the ground was still like iron, while fat Alfred and his children and Odd's mother were still asleep, Odd put on his thickest, warmest clothes, stole aside the smoke-blackened salmon from where it hung in the rafters of fat Alfred's house, and a fire pot with a handful of glowing embers from the fire, and he took his father's second best axe, which he tied with a leather thong to his belt and limped out into the woods. The snow was deep and treacherous with a thick, shiny crust of ice. It would have been hard walking for a man with two good legs, but for a boy with only one good leg and one very bad leg and a wooden crutch, every hill was a mountain. Odd crossed a frozen lake, which should have melted weeks before, and went deep into the woods. The days seemed almost as short as they had been in midwinter, and although it was only mid-afternoon, it was as dark as night by the time he reached his father's old wood-cutting hut. The door was blocked by snow, and Odd had to take a wooden spade and dig it out before he could enter. So this is his father's wood-cutting hut. So if you traveled too far into the woods to cut trees and couldn't get home, he would stay here. So Odd has walked all day to find this place. He fed the fire pot with kindling, that means little pieces of wood, and tended it until he felt safe transferring the fire into the fireplace where the old logs were dry. On the floor, he found a lump of wood slightly bigger than his fist. He was going to throw it in on the fire, but his fingers felt carving on the small wooden block, so he set it to one side to look at when it was light. He gathered snow in a small pan and melted it over the fire. Then he ate smoked fish and drank hot berry water. 
It was good. There were blankets in the corner still and a straw stuffed mattress. And he could imagine that the little room smelled like his father and nobody yelled at him or called him a cripple or an idiot. And so after building the fire high enough that it would still be burning in the morning, he went to sleep quite happy. So scholars, we've met Odd. We know a little bit about his Viking life. We'll find out about his adventures tomorrow. Bye.